Now, the next set of concepts that we want to uh, introduce is around this idea of design. So, uh, uh, traditionally, what kind of designs were looked at in uh, literacy? Well, there were things called grammar, which is, if you like, a kind of design, the design of a sentence. There's spelling, which is the design of a relationship between a word and the the phonic units that pull it together in a language like English which operates phonically um, and with all its exceptions and whatever we learn all those rules so what we did is we actually did deal with uh, languages design and the way in which we dealt with it um, is by saying there are right and wrong ways to do things in the world and we're going to test whether you got them right or wrong now the way we use design is in fact more expansive than that and we use it differently um, so instead of a static view of there are correct designs in language, we say that what happens is when one's building a meaning, when one's building a text, be it a, just a written text or a multimodal text, that what we do is we have a number of different conventions in the world that we can draw from across different modes, image, text, whatever, but also very different um, varieties of textual form depending on context. Vernacular, formal, professional, um, uh, um, everyday, um, uh, culture A, culture B, register A, register B. So we actually, there isn't one way of doing things in the world. Part of our multiliteracies argument is this extraordinary variety of uh, text types and, if you like, ways of communicating, ways of representing the world to yourself and then ways of communicating in that world. So what we have, these are things that we call available designs. And then what we do is rather than just replicate what we've been told, we do a very active process. We undertake a very active process that we call designing as a gerund. Now, let me say, the word design is a rather nice word because it, it has two kinds of, it can be used in two ways. It can be used as a noun, so there are intrinsic designs in things. So there is a design in a sentence called grammar, and there is a design in a word called phonics and spelling, and there is actually a design in a whole text, which might be called genre, which is, you know, um, introduction you know, whatever, conclusion. You know, there's, there are designs there which are these patterns, conventions. Um, so that's design the noun. But when we think of designing the verb as an active process, we find this very, very interesting phenomenon going on where it isn't just replicating the world, it's actually rebuilding the world. And every time the world is rebuilt, it's a different world. So the last 300 words that I said have never been said before. The last 300 words that you said have never been said before in this kind of combination. And if I wanted to interpret your words and my words, I can explain the books I've read, the life I've led, the culture I've got. I mean, I can actually do a kind of a, um, uh, an analysis of the provenance of this kind of text. But I rebuilt the text from all those available designs in my world and my life, and so did you, um, in, in, on the fly. And, and I rebuilt the world anew, and I rebuilt the world afresh uh, while I was speaking, while I was uh, building uh, this design. So what came out was a design. It's got some kind of pattern to it and structure. But I did designing, which meant that what it was, it was uniquely voiced and it was of this moment and it will never happen again in quite the same way and just the way that it never happened before in exactly the same way. So what we're left with is a residue called the redesigned. So in other words, you're watching this video now, you're listening to this video, and you're taking some things in, you're doing interpretive work, it inevitably won't be exactly what I'm thinking, but it will perhaps spark some ideas and you will rethink your world and you will interpret it. Um, so in other words, what I have done is I have left an object in the world, which happens to, in this case to be a recorded artifact, this video, um, and uh, that's left something in the world which is grist for the mill back in available designs. It's a kind of a cycle. But you can see here the difference between this and traditional literacy is a much more dynamic view of uh, literacy, a thing where I'm an agent in meaning making. I make meaning and that meaning always inevitably expresses something of who I am, my identity, my experiences in the world. It's never just getting the rules right. It's never just simply replicating what I've been told as the rules of literacy. There are, of course, multiple modes for making meaning-making in the world. And our case is that the digital 
has now uh, put more emphasis on the range of meaning ma making modes for all of us. Uh, we have uh, listed a number of them. We can make oral meanings through speaking. We have written meanings uh, with formal text and symbols. We have visual meanings. Of course, spatial meanings by the way things are arranged. Uh, tactile meanings, meaning from touching or feeling. You know, something is hot, something is cold, something is rough, something is warm and engaging. From gestural meanings, the way in which um, we understand uh, 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 space and, and uh, meaning from, uh, from gestures. And of course, audio, what we hear. All these uh, meanings are distinct and interrelated, of course. And the point that we like to make is that we are born into meaning-making that involves every single one of these modes. We are born into synesthesia. When we come into the world, uh, we, we make sounds, uh, we, we make marks, uh, we gesture, we touch, we explore space, uh, we, we, uh, we react to colour, we react to um, very many different uh, uh, prompts and stimuli. So we're born into a very synesthe synesthetic, rich environment for meaning making. But when we go to school, one of the things that school does, because it focuses on symbolic meaning making, uh, in, in English, at least in alphabetical uh, uh, science, uh, school tends to move a learner uh, through uh, all these other modes through to alphabetical literacy and writing as the main form in which meaning is made uh, in, the, in the context of schooling and school learning. We, like, we believe that as a consequence of the new technology now and the affordances of the new technology, the the means that allows you to reproduce many of those forms through the digital, that synesthesia is open to us again. So in terms of the curriculum, uh, any part of the curriculum, right across the curriculum, we can use uh, visual meanings and written meanings and oral meanings and audio meanings. Uh, we can participate in uh, recreating and rethinking uh, uh, anything from an experiment to uh, a piece of history and understand uh, what space and tactile and gesture might mean in that context. So right across the curriculum, we as educators need to understand how multimodality works in everyday life, but in particular the way in which digital uh, technology allows us to manipulate those uh, modes, to integrate them, and to uh, enrich meaning making through a more synesthetic use of the modes available to us.